Thanks everybody for joining us. This is um, Alex Bainbridge here from Green Left, and we're going to be starting up a brand new show. And we want to basically uh, do this sort of you know weekly sort of podcast and interviews and discussions with um, activists around the country. Uh, we're here today with uh, Marianne McKay, Noongar activist from WA, and Lizzie Jarrett, um, activist, Aboriginal activist from Sydney. And um, so we're going to basically have a bit of a discussion about Invasion Day, which is coming up next Tuesday. Uh, so that's actually an important topic, and I think it's very appropriate that we start this uh, first ever Green Left show on this topic, because um, you know justice for First Nations people is like an absolutely integral part of any sort of movement for justice in this country. There's no way you can have justice in this country without justice for First Nations people. So um, I'd like to acknowledge that we are all of us on stolen land, and um, and you know and obviously we're hoping to promote the Invasion Day rallies on next week. And uh, and the, the broader you know struggle for justice in for Aboriginal people. I um I did want to say at the beginning just to make it the make an announcement that we you know one of the ways you can support Green Left is to actually become a supporter, um, and that's the details in the link description for the video. And we're coming up on our thirtieth anniversary of uh, of Green Left's founding as well. So we're basically encouraging people to support you know show their support for Green Left um uh, at this time. And uh, as I said, yeah, the first topic for this uh, for this discussion is on Invasion Day, and I want to uh, Marianne and I wrote an article about you know uh, marching, you know, encouraging people to march for justice on Invasion Day. But I wanted to sort of toss that over to you, Lizzie. Uh, can you basically say like like your views, like why should why should people march uh, for Invasion Day? So both specifically, sort of, I guess, some of the general issues, but also, can you tell us the story about um, about your battle with the New South Wales Police as well? <laughs> Again, uh, again, New Jarwin, in my language of the Gumbangia people, that means hello, everybody. Um, I'd firstly like to just correct the English that I was introduced by. I'm not an Aboriginal activist. I'm a black woman that is fulfilling her right to be a self defender, land defender, water defender, and a life defender. I don't be a protester, I be a protector. So, yeah, I'd just like to put that out there first. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Um, yeah, why Invasion Day is so important. Um, wow. Well, the reasoning why is like, hello, is the start. It was a, the start of our demise. It's a, and it's the, the day that actually brings the wider, whiter, browner, every different colour Australian together mm -hmm. under one real notion of understanding what this country means to them and means to us. It's the, mo it's, it's the most essential day of the year for any politics let's be real about that in my opinion this is the one day that makes everyone sit and listen and learn to the real truth of what this country how this country started what the day of mourning means to us when australia day australia day was really actually erected which was you know not not this failed truth of james cook coming here and discovering us um hello he was already dead the hawaiians had already eaten him thank you very much you know, so it's just, it's, it's, it's an imperative day that all of our black people and the bigger thing for us is inviting everybody else to really understand the benefit of the land they walk upon. Come and walk with us and be, you know, a proud beneficiary, really, like understand what that means to be proud upon the land you benefit on that is built on massacres and stealing of children, stealing of language, stealing of land, poisoning of waters, breaking down of cultures. Seeing us live now in on mission hoods with no land rights, walking over a paddock where I sit right now on my mission, I can see 200 cows with more land rights than me and my people. So Invasion Day for me, it's, it's, it's the biggest, it's the must. It's like the one day where everyone gets to come together and they learn about who they are, where they are and what they need to do to go forward to be a decent human in this country that they benefit in. And as for the talk with New South Wales Police, well, <laughs> oh, I better watch my words a little bit and not mince them up too much and make sure that I'm seen as a hater because I don't hate the police. I just hate the system they support and the system they work for, which is that of the white supremacist that sees us all confined to boxes, to cages, to, to asylums, to many of the, like, you know, Anyway, New South Wales Police have decided that they don't want to even meet with us as organisers, as the a, as a Sydney rally directors. They have decided just to more or less brush us off and try and give us a silent ear. So we've decided to take it upon ourselves that, that we're not going to be not listened to. 
we are sovereigns of this. Oh, we're not, I'm not a sovereign of Sydney, get that correct. But there are sovereigns of Sydney, the dear, beautiful Auntie Rhonda Dixon, who welcomes us to every rally at the domain to understand why we welcome there, why we join there, why we meet there, the relevance of what that place means to her and her people from time immemorial. Uh, so at the moment, we're just trying to get legal heads alongside with us to put it forward to the Minister of Health, <laughs> Mr. Brad Hazard, who used to be the Minister of <laughs> Child Affairs and stole a lot of babies. So honestly, don't have a lot of faith in the idea that they're going to come to the table, but we're doing all we can in this evolved world of a white law on a black system to try and get them to meet with us, be with us, align with us if you need to, protect the people however you see fit, but do not shut us down. Do not tell us we will not march. Do not tell us we will not gather on the most important day to anybody who lives in Australia today. So, yeah. And uh, you just, uh, I understand, I mean, basically, no matter what happens, this march is going ahead, correct? Yeah, more or less. More or less us that are, you know, we understand that, we understand the COVID health. We have a full COVID health plan in place. Masks, QR code, sanitizer, marshals, medics, legal, like the full tick, 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 tick. Every box you need to tick to have any other event, like the cricket, like the footy, like netball, like community kids sports that I just went and watched on the weekend where there was, you know, hundreds of people there, unmasked, unsanitized, close to each other, screaming and cheering. No COVID traces coming out of there, and let alone all the, 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 in Sydney mainly, the protests we have done, like back in June with the biggest Black Lives Matter protest ever. Not one, yeah. Melbourne, not one trace of any COVID transparent, not one, yet they labelled that we did. Not one. So how can they, they, they can't just keep shutting down anything to do with us sovereigns standing up against the system when everyone else is allowed to go and celebrate cricket, mm -hmm. celebrate whatever we you know, go to Westfield, go to Westfield, Sydney right now. And I can guarantee you there's 2000 people walking around, maybe now with masks, with new mandatory laws, but there's no distancing. There's no, there's no concern about this great scare of COVID. But as soon as we put us as sovereigns or First Nations wanting to stand up for our rights, mm. ooh, they're a health restriction. Let's get to the reality that the health restriction is racism. The health yep. restriction is white Australia suppressing us as sovereigns for our rights to speak up, stand up and fight back against this system that is still continuing 230 years to kill us, oppress us, steal us, murder us. And we're not going to sit back and let that happen anymore. We're, invasion Day is the one day we all come together, not just us as First Nations. All of us come together and stand up against this uh, horrendous system that, that no one appreciates. If you're real, if you're a real human in this country, only the white supremacists or the rich lucky people that like the idea of the Australian flag, celebrate Australia Day. Anybody else understands there's no pride in genocide. So we're not going to sit silent. We're not going to sit back. And if it comes down to an ugly or hellfire fight in front of the media where the police arrest us, well, we've done that before and we'll do it again. Sadly, that's the reality. You know, there's, no, there's never been a change for us mob without protest. There's never been a change without resistance. So we're not going to change now just because they want to say, oh, COVID health safety. Hello, we understand the COVID health safety, but do you understand the safety of our people under racism? Mm -hmm. Do you understand we're still being murdered? We're being murdered. We're being kidnapped. We're doing all this under a bigger number than any COVID-19. So it's up to us to stand up and say, we're not going to be told. We're not going to be put in this little box on invasion day. You know, we've, we've come to you. We've asked you to help us. We've asked you to facilitate in the best way that the police could. We've given them the benefit to say, okay, we'll meet with you to try and keep the people safe. And yet we're shut down. We're ignored to the, to the effect we have to go to the health minister who used to be one of the biggest baby stealers of our people. So, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'm a fire, fired up black warrior woman ready to take to the streets and see who I meet and whoever's with me, let's do it. Let's understand that, you know, sovereignty is never ceded. Mm -hmm. And we understand it's a dangerous task. We under, like, I understand that I don't want any elders or children or anybody being hurt or harassed by the police. Lizzie Jarrett or anybody in the organising team does not support that. 
but we do support the fact of our rights as sovereigns to stand up on this day and be heard and be seen, hopefully with safety and hopefully with the police to be aligned with us. But at the moment, they're the ones being ignorant, not coming to the table. It's not on us trying to say we're just being the black radicals. No, we've come to them. We've asked them the process. We've done skip through the hoop, skip through the hoop, and now they've started to take away the hoop. Marianne, can I bring you into the conversation? Like what would be... Uh either your response to what Lizzie's just said then or, or your argument about why we should march on Invasion Day? Yeah, well, I agree with everything that the sisters just said. You know, it's the same right across the country. Um, in WA, we're pretty lucky that we're not having to fight against COVID restrictions, you know. Um, we sit over here and we watch what's going on on the East Coast and it's really sad that they can have all of these other activities like what Lizzie just said and yet, any time there's a protest for Aboriginal rights, all of a sudden, oh, no, there's restrictions. And it just goes to show um, the white supremacist values that exist in this country, you know. Um, when it comes to us mob here, um, the biggest fight we have is not against the police or, or the medical services, you know, to march. It's the fact that we've got to deal with a lot of rednecks and uninformed people that don't understand that, yeah, there is a, a nation that wants to celebrate their nationhood, but at the same time, they've got to remember that they are living on stolen land that has never been ceded by our people. There's mm -hmm. never been any um, restitution. There's never been any justice. You know, like Lizzie said, there's no pride in genocide. And what we're living under is a genocidal regime um, with armed forces leading the way. Anytime we want to do something, the police are there, the army, the government, and they're in full force with all of their systems to try and stop us from getting the truth out. And what's really horrible is the fact that people will talk about native title and say Aboriginal people get everything. And it's like, well, we don't get everything. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having to stand up and fight for our rights in this country. We'd just be living our lives like everyone else. But we've got to worry about our people going into jail and walking out those doors without passing away in custody. We've got to worry about police brutality. We've got to worry about our children being removed and placed into the hands of a non-Aboriginal foster care system that has no cultural awareness or no um, cultural input where our kids are growing up in an assimilated society not knowing their culture you know, and not knowing their family and, and where they come from. And it's really sad that um, native title is not land rights. And that's one of the things that we need to put across. What we're fighting for is total and absolute sovereign rights over our land because we still remain sovereign. We still, under international law and our own law, have the right to practice our culture, to revitalise our culture, to speak our languages, to march these streets and walk and occupy places that we want to occupy as the original custodians and continuing custodians of these lands. And what we're saying is we don't hate the police. We don't hate the government. What we hate is the actual system that the government and the police are enforcing upon us without our um, mandate or our cultural mandate from our elders. You know, we... Every year we have to deal with all of these uninformed people and racist people that have been so socially conditioned that their minds are brainwashed to believe that we should just sit down and shut up and be happy that they brought us education and health and all these services. And I just want to remind those people, we were quite happy. Our people were quite happy before any of that even come along. We had our own education. You know, we had our own health and medical services. We yep. had everything that kept our mob going to the point where we are the oldest living culture in the world that has survived any culture that exists on this earth. And that's something to be celebrated, you know? And all we ask is for non-Aboriginal people to have an understanding that this country was founded and continues to exist on murder, massacres, slavery, the abuse of our people, dispossession of our land, the, the stealing and kidnapping of our children. You know, the death of our people in custody, in, you know, police brutality. It's really sad that not out of the whole Royal Commission, there's only been a few of those, the 339 recommendations implemented. 
And today we've still got a fight. Whereas there would be a lot of deaths in custody that have happened over the years that wouldn't have happened if they would have just listened to those recommendations and listened to our people, you know? When it comes to my son's father, they said one of the Royal Commission recommendations was to remove hanging points in jail. Now, if that was followed, my son's father could be alive today because he passed away because the hanging points in Hay Care Prison were still there. So that's just one example. Look how many mothers and grandmothers you know, sisters, aunties, brothers, uncles, fathers are still burying their children because they're dying at the hands of a system that refuses to believe that there's a problem. And we've got funding being stripped time and time again from Aboriginal organisations, grassroots organisations, where we've got programs and services that are actually delivering things to our people that is helping and supporting our people. And as soon as that happens, oh, what happens? Oh, the government come along and take the funding yep. and it's like why do that when something's working it's because we have an aboriginal industry where they make so much money from us that the reality is they don't want us to get better because they don't want us to fight they just want to keep occupying the system that they have today without any restitution compensation or justice and that's a simple fact this system here was built to get rid of our people like the chief protector a.o neville said back in the 1900s they wanted to, by the third generation, wipe our people out. They wanted mm -hmm. to assimilate our people so the culture was gone. They forbid our people to practice. They forbid our languages, you know, the ceremonies. They prohibited everything. But on Yungar country, we're lucky that a lot of our elders, you had mobs that run away and they couldn't be found. So they managed to protect elements of our culture that we still have today. You got Uncle Ben Taylor there, one of the deadliest Yungar elders going, who despite being on the reserves and in the missions and that, he still learnt his language and his culture. And we're lucky that he opens up everything, speaking in the Noongar tongue that our ancestors and old people did before we were invaded, you know? And his biggest respects to Uncle Ben because he's a main elder boy that's at all of our gatherings. He's in his 80s and he's still doing what he has to do to fight for justice for our mob today. And all we want is for that justice to be recognised, acknowledged and get down on the ground with our grassroots mob and talk to us about a way forward. Because the yep. only way forward in this country is by speaking to our people down on the ground, not land councils, not these no. mainstream Aboriginal organisations with these token blacks that sit in, in Parliament that don't have a cultural mandate to speak for us. Like, we never put them there. We never give them permission to speak for our people. Their people might have given them permission to speak for their families and their mob, but they didn't give them permission to speak for all nations across this country because tribal boundary law, if you don't come from that place, you don't have the permission to speak for them unless there's a cultural mandate put in place and they tell you what to say, you know, and you got statements from those people. So it's really frustrating that, all we want is for non-Aboriginal people to come with us and walk with us because if we can find a way forward together, that's going to benefit every single person in this country, not just the Aboriginal people of this country. So we need to walk in unity. We need to march together. And it makes me proud that in Perth, we have thousands of people coming to the marches now, whereas when we was first marched and revitalised the March for Invasion Day like 10 years ago, there was about 10 of us marching. You know, so it shows that things are getting better. Non-Aboriginal people are coming to the table and they're uniting with us and walking with us like yourself, brother, you know. But then it's the system of government that continue to ignore that. So that's why we need them mob to come and walk with us, get good people in government so that we can truly have people that are going to walk with us so that Invasion Day and the whole understanding of it is totally understood because that's just one day of the year. You know, we need them to be with us every single day, but being at the start of the year, that's a start to get the conversation going and to force the government to do what truly needs to be done and listen to the people on the ground. These token blacks don't know what they're talking about. They're sitting there for a paycheck. They aren't doing what, they're not speaking with the tongue of our people on the ground. Otherwise they would listen to us and what we want would be put forward properly in a respectful way that the elders want it to, you know? Well, talking about tokenism, that was the next question I wanted to ask because it seems to me there is a lot of people that do uh, 
basically advocate for tokenistic changes, like Scott Morrison changed one word in the national anthem, and there's talk about constitutional rec recognition, which you know counts for something, but it still is a it's still a symbolic change, not a meaningful change. So what I wanted to ask you both, maybe Marianne, you go first. What do you th see as the as the as the really systematic changes that are needed to make decolonization a reality? Like, how would you see what do we need to do to make decolonization a, a, a real meaningful change? Well, the government needs to. There are many hundreds of nations right across this country, and time should not be a factor when it comes down to respect and doing what is right and what is proper. So the government should be getting down on the ground and meeting with the elders and leaders, the recognised elders and leaders within each nation so that we can put forward what it is that we truly need and want. Because there's many nations around the country and we all have a common goal, but there are different things that are needed in different nations. You know, so we can't all, the government can't put us all in that same basket. We all have different needs and wants. You know, so they need to get onto the ground and truly, I'm sick of that word consultation, you know, because we are the most consultated people on this earth. And what we really need is for them to get down on the ground with every single nation. I don't care how long it takes. So those discussions need to be had. And when it comes to constitutional recognition, why would we want it to be, why would we want to be included in a document that was founded on genocide and all the war crimes huh? that still exist today? Like, that's not our document. We don't want that constitution. That doesn't have rights of the people in it. That constitution exists simply to support their system. And that's it. And the economy of this country. There's no rights for people in there. You know, it's not a bill of rights like they have in America. So we need a whole new constitution after all of those negotiations are done with the, the first people of this country, right around this country, every single nation, not mm -hmm. just a few people from WA and a few people from South Australia. Every single Aboriginal nation needs to be consulted and we need to construct a whole new constitution after we have some sort of sovereign agreement that acknowledges and implements all of our cultural rights and values that we had before they came and invaded this country. And as for the national anthem, that's all based on the white Australia policy. Why would we want to sing something that, that supports that kind of racist crap? You know, I've never stood for the anthem. Like we don't, that's not our anthem. We got our own um, songs and language and that there that we do to recognise where we come from, you know, and we are one and free. We're not one. This country remains divided right, right since they first came here. So there is no way that we are one and free. Scott Morrison needs to pull his finger out of his ass and actually do the right thing instead of all this tokenistic crap, want to sign a close the gap policy and they don't even, everything's getting worse. So mm -hmm. it's all tokenistic and just crap as far as I'm concerned. There's no meaning to any of it. Are your comments, Lizzie? Oh, well, Sister Girl more or less covered everything that I'd probably say. Um, the only thing I could add is like, you know, like we are the oldest continuum of culture of people known to all land i think we know how to run the show mm -hmm. i think you know um white australia has been here for um seven generations eight generations how much damage have they done mm. i can't breathe clean air i can't drink clean water i can't hunt on land why from the white australian policy that continues to poison each and every single one of us that hears my voice or sees my face right now Decolonization is a must for all survival. Mm -hmm. It must start, I believe, if, like especially in our schools with the youth that are coming up. Let them understand what land they're on. Let them see an auntie or an uncle in the school that's not there as an AEA for a tokenistic yeah. job. Let them see an auntie or uncle that comes there and teaches them, this is the land you're on. This is the language it was if they still have one. Mm -hmm. You know, let these little children understand, wow, this is what Australia was before my daddy and mummy tell me I get to sing the national anthem and raise every day at school that supports mm -hmm. my little class member sitting over here, her grandparents' genocide and murder. That's mm -hmm. where we need to start, hitting these little brains as well, hitting these little hearts as much as, you know, I don't like to terrify children, but t children that don't grow with the truth don't grow at all. Mm -hmm. They don't grow at all. They're going to be ignorant Scott Morrisons that think they can change one word in a 
wow, lucky I almost swore then used all the language, but in this most atrocious song, and that's mm -hmm. meant to make all of us feel better about it? No. ScoMo, sorry, bro. You know, like prayers and thoughts aren't enough. Mm -hmm. Changing one word is not enough. Like, you know, we have how many sister girls sitting right here? She could be a self-governor herself. Mm -hmm. We've got enough white legislation behind her to make sure she ticked all their boxes to speak in these places. We have people in our mobs all over every nation. We have lawyers, mm -hmm. doctors, politicians, political minds, down from grassroots activists like me to the most educated person up there wearing a bachelor's degree hat. Mm -hmm. We have the people that can make this turn around. But the Australian government is so scared of people like us and you, Alex, mm -hmm. joining this and anybody else that they are making it almost impossible to recognize guess what recognize what the white australian constitution stands for yep. before you ask to recognize us recognize what that bullshit piece of paper really stands for mm -hmm. and then come and ask us we want to be recognized in that come on get real please like don't ask us to fetch your toilet paper mm-hmm you know, when you've got the toilet paper in front of you, read it, decipher it, recognize your own bullshit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm getting fired up as I do because, yeah, Australian policy, constitution, telling us to recognize what? Recognize what? We need to be fired up, don't we? <laughs> well, yeah, I don't believe why we, you know, why not? We're born mm -hmm. from a fire. We have yep. a fire. We keep a fire burning. Without the fire, there'd be no truth. Without the fire, we would all be standing there proudly saying, Advance Australia Fair. Yep. The fire needs to start burning down the Australian system. We need to start actually burning down these places. And I don't mean being violent. I mean getting inside these places and dismantling the structure that keeps us all in these oppressed boxes. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, you know, I'm 41 years old. I've raised three young men. Thankfully and gracefully, thanks to the ancestors and my teachings, they've never been under police brutality. They've never had docs. But mm -hmm. it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It doesn't mean yeah. in the back of every day this mother's going, hey, every time my son leaves my yard, be humble. I yeah. shouldn't have to tell my son to be humble. I should be telling my son to walk proud, loud, stand up. But as their mother, I have to go, hey, just be a little bit humble, please. Because, you know, without humility, they could come home in a body bag. I want to ask also about treaty. I mean, there have been some moves in some states towards development of a treaty, but I think there is a question to be raised about, is it better to have a, like, a, like a, a bad treaty rather than, is it better to have no treaty or a bad treaty? And what is it that would make a treaty a good treaty? So what's your views on treaty in general? Maybe Lizzie, do you want to start with that? Um, I don't believe there could be a treaty, a national treaty, because as me and Sister Marion told you, we're all individual nations. Mm -hmm. We've had our own, we have our own songline treaties with our neighbouring mobs mm -hmm. that, that culturally the old people still respect. White Australia have no idea about that. But we have our own treaties that needs to be sorted and taken care of for, to even think of any sort of national treaty that could appease all of us. Not the mm -hmm. white man, wouldn't give a far out anything about what appeases them. But to make all of our nations happy under the one blanket of being Aboriginal, being native, being indigenous, being all these lovely mm -hmm. words that like tuck at us. Yep. I don't believe in my, this is only my opinion though, I need my treaty with my people, which means treaty from Gumbangi to Bunjalung to Dungadi to Yagel to across the mountains to Camilleroy to Rajari to da 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 da. That's mm -hmm. how our treaties works. And then once the consensus of that, you grow and grow. That's the only way I see treaty. And at the moment, like them, you know, them beautiful mob down there, Jabberung tree mob, like, no trees, no treaty. They're going to keep cutting our land. They're going to keep stealing our kids. They're going to keep doing all this stuff to us and expect us to sign a nice piece of paper that mm -hmm. lets them get away with it. Yep. No, sorry, not in Lizzie Jarrett's eyes, not in, not in my time. I won't be signing anything that's a treaty unless it's for me and my people internally that we've constructed. Yep. Marianne, your comments? Yeah, no, I agree with what Sis Lizzie is saying. This is what we talk about all the time. We need to get down on the ground like with us, our neighbouring tribes are you got Wongatha, you know, Kalgoorlie way, and then you got Yamaji mob that goes up, you know, Amangu and Wadri yep. and that, you know, up Shelton. So we need those internal structures to be fully supported. And when it comes to the treaty agreement, 
we do need a sovereign treaty agreement with all the different governments around the country because we are individual nations. There cannot be one treaty agreement or sovereign agreement that covers the whole of Australia because we all have different needs and wants and different cultural laws, even yep. though we have those common ones. So the government, like I said before, needs to get down on the ground and consult every single Aboriginal nation around the country, but they also need to make it possible for us to have our own internal meetings and gatherings so that we can sort out what it is that we want to keep those sovereign treaty songline agreements in place without the Australian government's sovereign agreement, sovereign treaty agreement interfering with those cultural law ones down on the on the grassroots level. Lydia Thorpe couldn't join this chat, but I had, had the chance to interview her this morning, so I want to actually include some of her comments that she made um, this morning uh, now. So Invasion Day for our people, for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across the country, uh, it comes with so many reminders of our trauma, of the continued injustice that uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander face in this country every minute of every day. Uh, it's a reminder of the unfinished business in this country. And it's a reminder of uh, the first war that was ever declared uh, on these shores uh, against this country's first people, uh, the frontier wars. Many thousands of Aboriginal people, men, women and children were murdered uh, for the land that we now call Oz. And to see people celebrating murder, theft, dispossession is, is a, is, <sighs> reliving our trauma and it has to end. Uh, this country is in denial of the truth. Uh, we see that with Scott Morrison's comments yesterday and it, you know, we need a leader that's going to unify this nation, not divide it any further. So the 26th of January uh, for the last, for all my life has been uh, it's not just that day, it's a lead up to that day where the trolls come out, where the racists come out and where we have to continue to uh, justify our existence as Aboriginal people in this country. So it's a tiring week leading up to the 26th of January. We are sick of protesting. Uh, I've been protesting since I was five uh, on the 26th of January and I'm 47 uh, now my, you know, my now six-year-old granddaughter is marching for, for her rights and her future uh, as a young Aboriginal woman in this country. So the 26th of January is not a day to celebrate. It's a day to mourn. It's a day to own and acknowledge what has happened so that we can move forward together. And yeah, pick a day that does suit but we can't pick a day while the injustices continue. So I was going to ask you also about treaty because there have been some uh, perhaps tentative moves towards treaty in some parts of the country although I'm wondering what to you do you think is in I guess the question is what would make a good treaty and I guess I mean, one thing I've wondered about I mean like to me it, well I'm, I'm, I guess what's your opinion my my feeling would be like a bad treaty might almost, might almost be worse than having no treaty at all um, so what is required to make it a good treaty and what do you think the steps are to achieve that? I agree. Uh, if it's a bad treaty, like what the Victorian treaty is looking like, uh, no consent, no jurisdiction. Uh, and yeah, I'd rather not have one either. Uh, a good treaty to me is one where all clans and nations are at the table, a part of the conversation and that they self-determine their own destiny. Now they can do that with their own local communities. Uh, we could have local government involved in those conversations, but first and foremost, those clans and nations need to decide whether they want to participate in a treaty. And we, if we look at Waitangi Treaty, there were clans, there are clans that have not participated in the, in the Treaty of Waitangi. 
So people need to self-determine whether they even want to be part of one. Uh, and ultimately, a treaty to me is about peace. It's about ending the injustice and this war against our people in this country. It is about ending uh, the destruction of our land and our water and our people. And, and I don't need to even go there with the statistics of what our people face in this country, but it means an end to all of those injustices. It means economic independence and it means uh, an understanding and an acknowledgement and an acceptance from white Australia uh, that, yeah, things have happened in this country that we're not proud of, but we want to be part of uh, a country that acknowledges and accepts and moves forward in a way that ends those injustices. So it is a peace treaty. Uh Changing the topic slightly, I mean, a lot of the world is focused at the moment on the, the Biden inauguration and the defeat of Trump and the sort of the far right movements there. Um, do you have any comments you'd like to make about that situation? Uh, well, a treaty to me, again, is about sorting out our business in our own country. And the United States, States is a very good example of how they haven't been able to sort out their own country's race relations and what's been going on there against black people in America. Uh, that, that's happening here uh, and it's getting worse. So I think we need to learn from what's going on over there so that we can uh, heal ourselves as, as people in this country so that what we're seeing in the United States does not happen here. I mean, we've, I've seen a recent SBS report that said that 50% uh, of young people now support changing the date. Although I'm wondering if you want to make any comments about, I guess, uh, changes that go beyond symbolic changes only. Like what do you think, in terms of to decolonize, decolonize in a meaningful way, what do you think that would actually involve? Uh, we can only change the date if we're changing the situation of the nation for first people in this country. There's no point changing the date uh, and celebrating the same thing. You can't change a date to celebrate invasion and attempted genocide. Uh, if we change the date, which I think is, is a good idea, it has to be changed with change not just changing the date we need to end the injustice against our people and we need a date that uh everyone is going to be happy with but a date that ensures that we are celebrating equally and for the right reasons and not the wrong reasons so we can't kick the can down the road without uh owning what's happened and changing the way we do business with this country's first people. And I mean, actually, I was going to ask um, if you had comments specifically about like abolish Australia Day versus change the date, because I mean, both both slogans are being raised. So do you have any comments about that? Um, I won't say abolish Australia Day, um, but I will say we need to change what its meaning is. I think, uh, you know, abolishing it is going to get people's backs up uh, and, and it already has. Uh, people, uh, you know, love their Aussie day. They love their Aussie flag. They love their Aussie barbecue and they love their, their day off, right? To abolish that is, is going to get people's backs up. And, and I want to just, uh, because people don't understand what that means. Those fellas that are celebrating, they don't understand what abolishing Australia Day means. Uh, so I'd, I'd prefer to spell that out a little bit further and, and say, yes, you can celebrate, but let's celebrate when we've changed the nation. Uh, so abolishing it um, won't, won't fix it. It won't unite us. Uh, changing the meaning of it will. And a final question quickly, just before we go, I mean, I wanted to ask you both about your views on the, 
the idea of um, abolish Australia Day versus change the date? Abolish Australia Day, abolish Australia. That's that's about my view altogether. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, that's okay. Of course, of course. I'll keep it short and sweet with that one. Abolish Australia Day, abolish Australia, because sovereignty is never ceded. Get woke, get real, get where you're meant to be. You know, understand we are the most loving, caring, nurturing people of any culture. We know how to love a land. We know how to love people. And if the white Australian government would, would just give us this little tiny bit of respect, this whole country would be a better place, brother. This whole country, we wouldn't need to be promoting ourselves like this out there in the world. It'd be known. It'd be taught. It'd be talked about. But sadly, we are put in this position where we are hush, 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 Australia this, Australia Day that, Australia. Hello, Australia Day. Well, how do you celebrate something so horrendous against another form of people and against another human? So, like I said, abolish Australia Day. And along, along with that, abolish Australia. Marianne? Yeah, I agree. I agree, like with Lizzie, to a certain extent. Um, over in WA, we've been a big part of the change the date campaign because to us, changing the date actually starts those discussions about why Australia Day should not be celebrated on the day that it is and why there is really no nation to celebrate without the justice of the First Nations people. So I agree that there can't, there really is no Australia Day that can be celebrated without honouring the first peoples of this country and coming to some sort of consensus for us to move forward. So the Change the Date campaign to me is about bringing forward those discussions and allowing the wider community to understand why is it that we want the date changed? Why is it that we have Invasion Day, Survival Day? Why is it that we don't support the Australia Day celebrations and the fireworks? Because mm -hmm. the fireworks to us are like gunfire that our ancestors and old people had to listen to when they first invaded. So that's been our view over the last few years and working in with the city of Fremantle to change the date down there and having those discussions with our elders and that down on the ground. So that's been a pretty respectful thing and having the one day out at Fremantle has been um, important for bringing the community together and keeping those discussions alive. And I think that through that, that's what's actually brought more people forward in regards to our Invasion Day campaigns and our rallies and bringing everyone together because in Perth, we battle to get a thousand people to any kind of rally, no yes. matter what the issue is. So I think that both sides of the argument are really important for bringing forward that unity and understanding yep. to the wider community um, and in order for us to walk forward, you know? Yep, definitely. Fully respect that, my sister, because, yeah, that's the reality. You know, we have to make sure we use the right wording. We have to make sure we use the right narrative for these mob to come on and go, hey, what does that mean for me? How do I help? What's going on? What do you mean by change the day? What do you mean by abolish the day? What, what's going on? So it's yeah. really important to have these conversations on the ground and, like, yeah, fully respect that that's what's happening over there. And, what yeah. we're, like, that's what we're proving right now. Things need to happen differently in different nations. Yep, that's huh? right. But it's fully yep. respect making people come to you like what do you mean what what do you mean by change the day I, I don't know what's going on like hey well guess what get here get involved get educated get you know have a talk what do you do what can you do what can't you do you know what I mean yeah yep. it's really keep these narratives yep. going yep. And, that's the and I think I think it's important to have those those different narratives too because then the wider community understands well hang on like these mob are saying this and these mob are saying this but at the end of the day we've still got that common goal of yeah. sovereignty never ceded, justice now, no pride in genocide. Let's move together the way that we should be, you know? That's right, my sister, that's right. Now, I, I didn't say at the beginning, Marianne, but you're a candidate for social science in the state elections coming up in March. Did you have any comments you wanted to make about that campaign? Um, yeah, so I've never had any political aspirations, you know, like I've, as much as, you know, protesting and that there, well, fulfilling our cultural obligations is what we like to say, you know? As much as all of that is really hard work and things like that, that's my passion is standing up and fighting, you know. But it's just getting to that point where we got people speaking in parliament, in government, that don't have the right to speak for us. And I've just had enough. And Use Mob at Socialist Alliance have always supported us over the years with all the different campaigns in regards to Aboriginal justice, you know, Noongar rights and things like that. So when I had discussions with Sam, um, I just thought, yep, nah, let's do this, you know. 
So um, I'll be running for the South Metropolitan seat um, with brother boy there, Dirk Kelly, um, and with Sam running, and that's for the um, Legislative Council, and then Sam's running for the Legislative Assembly in Fremantle, in the Fremantle area. So it's been, um, yeah, like exciting, you know, like and a learning journey, you know, because I've never been on this path before. And I think that it's really important that we can garner that interest from community um, and let them know, look here, we got a Nyunga woman here, you know, someone who's a grassroots, someone who, who has lived and learned experience about what real people need down on the ground. And, you know, we've got our climate change policies. We've got our policies in regards to homelessness. We've got our policies, you know, renewable um, energies and things. We've got our policies on the whole Black Lives Matter in regards to deaths in custody, child removal, you know, housing, land rights, not native title, you know, sovereignty never ceded. Like all the, all the issues <clears throat> that people face down on the ground, real people face, not all of these government um, policies, you know, that all these mainstream mob want to put forward or they're not fighting hard for. And I think that it's really important to get real people like us mob inside that parliamentary arena so that we can fight the system from the inside. And if we can get elected, well, that would be a bonus. And one of our things, one of our main um, initiatives, like one of our main things that we're putting forward is the politicians get way, paid way too much. They don't need all that money. So whatever, if we got elected, whatever is earned above that, you know, the normal work wage that a normal person on the ground would get, well, that'll be donated into campaigns where we can fight for true justice for everybody, you know, because we don't need it. It's all wasted money that could be, um, you know, put in for somewhere else, you know, for things that really need it. And the government aren't going to come forward with things that we need. So if we can do that on the ground at you know, with real people, um, well, that's a bonus. And so all of that really captured my interest and I thought, well, stuff it, I'm just going to go ahead and do it, you know. you you got to be in it to to win it, <laughs> in a sense. So we'll just see how we go. And, um, you know, hopefully all goes well. And if it doesn't, well, we've still got the federal election coming up next year as well. So we'll just see how we go. And it's been an exciting journey and walking, like with all the deadly wadulas, you know, that we're usually protesting alongside with. No, but good on you, Sister Marion, eh? Proud of you for standing up and doing that, you know? Especially the yeah, life. Yeah, no, you thank you, sis. Got that many babies and you're always there for everybody and you're always there doing everything. So I really hope people get behind you and see the goodness you can bring and, you know, I'm, I'm excited for you. I can't wait to hear from you saying, yeah, we're going to go and kick some ass. I'll be like, let's go. Well, thanks, Pat, for both of you. Do you have any final comments before we finish up? No, big loves to you both, you know, and everyone who ends up watching the video. So, yeah, yeah and... um. You know, wherever you are across the country, have a look and see what rallies are around and um, go and join in, you know, and, you know, go and get educated, um, listen to the people's stories, you know, and, and just be a part of, of history in the making. That's right. we'll, we'll put a link below to all the Invasion Day rallies that we know of. So if you have a look, check out that link. Lizzie, any final comments? Uh, more or less the same thing, you know, like main thing, all mob out there that are listening to this and allies that actually are woke just love one another a bit more right now this time of year as we all know this time of year makes us all have demons the racists come out to play mm -hmm. god knows how many emails i have right now being called a domestic terrorist you yeah. know what i mean like so just love one another share the love because we are the people that know how to love so right now it's really important that we get out there and no matter how much hate's being thrown around just keep loving keep standing strong Get to an Invasion Day rally if you can. Follow the COVID safety plan. Do you listen to the police if they do tell you to move on or anything? Do not put yourself in danger. Do not put yourself out there as a target that we already are. You know, please come along safely, sensibly. Get on the ground. Like I just said, get educated. Get with us. Take a stand on Invasion Day that makes you a proud Australia. Yeah. And I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Alex. Uh, just a message to all those uh, listening, uh, our allies that turn up, turn up on Invasion Day, wear black uh, as, a, as a mark of respect and, and a day of mourning, pay the rent for being on stolen land uh, and be COVID safe. All of these rallies need to be COVID safe. We don't want 
uh, people getting sick. We want people to, to take the appropriate precautions. If you have any symptoms, don't come. Elders, don't come. Uh, wear your mask, bring your sanitizer and stand with us in solidarity. And it's not just one day of the year. It's 365 days of the year that we need you to stand with us. So thank you. And, and I'm honoured to be part of the first show. So thank you for that also. Thanks for having us, brother. Yeah.